Welcome back to a Wednesday in the kitchen, but not just any kitchen. It's the brand new kitchen, and it's the culinary hotline bling! Ding, ding, ding! Honestly, honestly, this kitchen counter is so big, I'm gonna have to take an Uber from this end to that end, but walk with me, walk with me. Summer is officially here, and to help you along with all your entertaining and getting the best food you can possibly get on the table, I bought professional, private <laughs> chef, Courts Anderson in the kitchen. Welcome, it's your first time in the kitchen. Thank you, yes. You get to, you get to experience your first time in the kitchen. In and the, the first kitchen. time, Yeah, and the first time cooking in this new kitchen, so we're very, very excited. So bringing you here yeah, this morning was purely strategy. We know that our guests are gonna be entertaining this festive season. I brought in a professional who knows how to cater amazing food for like masses, right? Sometimes small, but you also do those big groups. So yes. today is all about, today, let me tell them, today is all about getting professional tips on how you can prepare the most amazing food this festive season. And if you have any questions regarding anything foodie related, send us a WhatsApp voice note to 063-408-8863. Okay, are you, are you excited? Yes. Okay, let's do this. I honestly am so just obsessed with this kitchen. You know when something's so nice, you don't want to like touch it? But we're going to have to cook because that's why we're here. So what are we making for our first dish? Okay, we are going to make double smash burgers with cheese or cheesy double smash burgers. Oh, yes. With my delicious secret sauce, which I want you to make, please. For sure. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start on the burgers. Okay, so my I was instructed as soon as you start, get the burger patties down on the grill. So I'm going to give that 30 seconds to heat up while you talk through what's actually inside this beautiful patty. Okay. You got this. You got this. <laughs> so I, I, I like the idea that you're introing with a burger. So I'm, you, you can mix. I'm going to talk so long. Because okay. I feel like there's so much you can do Let's ahead see. of time when it comes to preparing burgers. Because yeah. the buns, I mean, obviously, yes, that you do closer to the time because you don't want it to be stale or toasted too advanced. But the, the mince and the actual fillings and the slicing of the tomatoes and the lettuce, you can do that way ahead of time and keep it fresh. Yep. So is, this, is that why it's a go-to for you? 100%. It's just so easy and it's always a crowd pleaser. I mean, you can do it for one person, you can do it for your family, or you can just do it for 20 people. And it will just, it's so quick and easy. Slap the burgers on the grill, put it together, and you have juicy, delicious burgers in... 15 minutes. There we go, I like that. And also depending how like rustic or authentic you wanna keep it, you could get like burgers off the braai and not have to serve them on plates, right? You can serve them like this again. Let's change the serviette. Look, I'm always looking for ways to not do dishes, so that seems like a great one for me. So that's really great. Okay, so what went inside our filling? So we got some onions and garlic, smoked paprika for the smokiness, salt and pepper and some dried mixed herbs. Then I'm gonna go in with the eggs, mm -hmm. just to bind it. And a handful of panko. And the panko, I really like when you get like fricadels or meatballs when you add the breadcrumbs to it. It's got this a magic way of just keeping things juicy. Yeah. And that's what I love. I mean, a dry burger is pretty much Oh my it's, God, it's, sad. it's like eating cardboard. Oh, no, it's very, very sad. So I like the fact that you've got those breadcrumbs in there. And, and like, also, like I learned from the moms and the aunts out there, when they actually soak the breadcrumbs in milk, in milk. first, even juicier, so that's a great way. Plus, it bulks up your mince, so you'll go from like serving four people to now be able to serve like six or maybe yeah, more, 100%. just because you've added that, that element in there. Okay, so you're busy giving it a mix, and the shaping you can obviously do, we spoke about that ahead of time, and you can just shape all your burger patties, so come the day, get them on the right, boom, 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 boom. But I wanted to chat to you because Registration has started for young um, high schoolers to apply for whatever they want to do when it comes to their next steps in the career. If they are looking at chefing, right? We've yeah. brought quite a few chefs on and we haven't had a lot of private chefs, so I want to get your insight. How did you end up being a private chef? Just in case there are any young students out there that want to be a private chef. So after, my, uh, after I studied, mm -hmm. I went into um, to industrial kitchens and I just really didn't enjoy it. Like, I love being creative, I love being my own person, and I love showcasing my creativity in my food. When you're in industrial kitchens, you're creating someone else's food, and you, you, you're cooking, I mean, you cook delicious food, yes, mm -hmm. but you're not showcasing yourself, and you can't be expressive. I express myself through my food. So when I decided to become a private chef, 
it was a very daunting for me um, I didn't think I could do it and then I did my first week and it was amazing and I just yeah it just comes to you so naturally and you just I woke up every morning and I was like right um, going to Woolworths open the fridge okay I'm gonna cook lamb today and it was just that's just how it is and let me just tell you viewers out there um, Court's clients are so high profile that we can't actually talk about them on the show and I'm being very serious. So it's, it's, very, it's a very exciting job. Yes. And the fact that you get to be creative every day and yes. change up the menu. I love that. Okay, cool. So we got our um, patties down. That's what we're doing its thing. Let's talk about the buns. Those look like brioche buns. They are brioche buns. I want, to, I want to specifically brioche buns mm -hmm. because it's more flavor and softer. Um, and then I always like to toast the buns. Very important. Very, very important. Slap some butter on there, put it on mm -hmm. the... Uh, you can even put it on the grill before you... you um, do the burgers so you can even do one pot. This is like, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. Absolutely, and I get that. Okay, so filling's done, patty's going, buns are toasted, and everything's been sliced ahead of time. I think we can go ahead and assemble one. We need to make the sauce first. The sauce, okay, so talk to me about the sauce. You okay. Guys, okay, sorry, I'm gonna go back to it again. I'm obsessed with this new kitchen, honestly. Okay, loving it, we're walking and talking. Walking and talking, these need to come off. Are they good, good? Yeah, Do you good. melt your cheese on the patty? Yes. Or do you melt them? Yes. Let me bring this board to you over here while I go and work on the sauce. So, for the sauce, we got mayonnaise going into the bowl. Ketchup. All of it? No. Like half, quarter? Like half, yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's good. And then we've got some Chopped pickles. Now, here's where I feel like it totally depends if you're a pickle person. Because I would But add... you know what? Even if it, I have made these for even non pickle persons, uh -huh. and they still love it. Non pickle persons. Non pickle okay, persons. Okay, cool. I'm a pickle person. Okay, cool. So, there we go. In we go. Like that. Enough. Maybe it's a bit more than we're supposed to, but I'm a pickle person. Then, onions. <laughs> onions go in. Onions go in. So, what I found is if people are put off there by like this very strong flavor of raw onions, Put a little boiling water over them for just like 30 seconds. Yeah, and, and it takes it away. It takes that, that astringent, like that harsh onion flavor away. And then makes it a lot sweeter. Okay, cool. So let's do this. We've got exactly one minute to boil the most amazing smash burgers. Did you put the Worcester sauce in? Oh, that smells amazing. It actually smells very familiar, and I don't want to say what sauce it smells like. It's that very famous, famous one. Um, we can't say the name, but yes. You can't say the name, you can't say that's the name. where it's from. But basically, if you want the recipe to the famous burger sauce, this is it. A little bit of that Worcester sauce to add a little bit of umami, umami, I like that. So I'm cool. gonna shove these on here for now. Sure. They don't over. Do you need, a, do you need this to go on the base of your, of your yes, buns? Yes, please. Okay, cool, I'm not using a spoon now. We're gonna pour it this way. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, very quickly. Burger sauce goes down. A little bit more. You need to be, you need to be really kind. There Burger go. sauce goes down. Let's get this. Let's... Okay, so now we're going to build in a second. We'll come back to show you the reveal. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more culinary hotline bling. Ching, ching, ching. It's my feel good. And we're back in my favorite place in the studio. And to be honest with you, it's the coolest space in the kitchen. In the whole studio, sorry. Absolutely amazing. Chef Quartz, um, yeah. Carl Wasty hasn't given me feedback on his burger yet, but I also haven't seen him eat it. I think he, like, wrapped it up and put it in his pocket. Oh, my gosh, no. Yeah, no, no, this, he's obsessed with his burger, so we'll get, we'll get Carl's feedback in a second about that burger. Tell me, we're about to go some fresh green. Fresh of... green, summery salad that's amazing for entertaining. And it involves pearl couscous. So, again, if you have any questions for myself or Chef Courts, please let us know in a WhatsApp voice note. That number is 6, 6, 063 Okay. Pearl couscous? Pearl couscous is life-changing. Right, so you might be familiar with, with normal couscous at home. Pearl couscous is its chunkier cousin. It's delicious. It's amazing. And what I love about it most is the fact that you can make this days in advance. I just days. feel like the flavor just gets better and, and better, better the as longer it, as it, sits. it sits. And then do you cook your pearl couscous the same way you do normal couscous, or is it a little more cooking involved? No, my normal couscous, I just pour hot water with a... 
plastic wrap over it, mm -hmm. and then it will the, the residual heat will cook the couscous. This one I'll do in a pot for, with some salt. With a lot of salt, yeah. Like two to one ratio for the water, and maybe like five, seven minutes. And you don't want to overcook pork No, because couscous. then it's just going to, it loses its shape completely. It becomes and then one it becomes giant... Spider -Man. Like Spider-Man. Okay, cool. So, let's talk about how we're going to be filling this amazing couscous salad. So, I'm trying to get the most green yeah. that's packed with flavour. Radish, always for the pink. And for that slight Adds little bit of pepperiness. Bright, bright little colours to it. We're going to do some grilled veggies to get mm. beautiful... Can you start cutting those, actually? Yes, please? talk to me. So, we're going to do grilled asparagus and grilled zucchini, just to, like, get that flavour going. And once, the, as of the zucchini comes off the pan, I want you to put it in a bowl and zest some lemon zest over it with salt and pepper, and sure. it will literally absorb all that citrus. I'm literally gonna need a bowl, so I'm gonna ask someone to get me a nice big bowl, but in the meantime, for your zucchini slash marrows... Sliced in... Just in half, or yeah. thin slices? No, 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 straight, straight in half. We're gonna keep it chunky. Oh, uh, thank you, because that's the thing about, like, when people talk salads, I feel like they forget that any dish is supposed to be about texture. Yeah. And then they chop things up like super small and it doesn't make sense when you can literally have big chunk, a lot of texture, and again, you're adding extra, an extra another layer of flavor with that... With the grill. With the grill, there we go. So let me just get these Get a going. beautiful charred edge. Oh, it's gonna be so delicious. This looks, I mean, it's pretty amazing given that the seasons change in South Africa and what, besides the beautiful warm weather, what we end up getting is also an abundance of fresh produce. So it's a great way to kind of play around and get the best of the seasonal produce. Can I use a little bit of your oil? Yes. So please. I know that this is for your dressing. I just need a little bit. Just cool. a smidgel. Oh. Carl, Carl Wasty. So when I was laying down after my burger. You did eat your burger? How Sorry. was your burger, Carl? Oh, my word. It was phenomenal. Also, I don't know why I haven't been invited to this, this like, beautiful cooking Listen. thing. Like, why am I not involved here? Do you want to come chop, just, chop? I just wanted to be a part of it. I got you a bowl, though. Thank you. Thank That's you. It's very kind, Carl. Yes, while, you. while you are here, can you talk about this kitchen? And I'll be very honest with you, this kitchen, just a count alone, I'm pretty sure it's bigger than the first apartment I ever had. So, wow. very impressed. Talk about this kitchen, right? Okay, this kitchen, first and foremost, you know, Curbs, I've been watching this reality TV show about home renovation. Yes. And Curbs is massively trendy in that particular place. It's a renovation show down under. And oh. Curbs, it actually creates flow. Yeah. Have you notice how corners are quite... Curbs is about flow. If you look at the way we operate on your feel-good breakfast show and the way we make our food, everything has a flow to it. Yeah. There's a cycle. And I think with Curves, you're actually saying to your home, you're saying, like, welcome, be a part of the flow of the home. And we're doing the same thing on Expresso. Absolutely. And I actually want to, like, Carl, you're not going to take a walk to the... Courtney, we'll be right back. Yes. We'll be right, You'll be we'll back. We'll be right back. back. So this is what Carl's talking about. Yes. And I feel like it invites the movement of how the kitchen suggests you should move. Exactly. And that's how they've done it with this... This is not a... It's not a home decor show, but we, we're obsessed. Okay. We are. The, the curve on the end and the fact so that... So, as you walked... Okay, so I'm going to walk over here. So I'm going to enter the kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. Walk with me here for a second. Instead of me coming to a place where, okay, this is the top of the table, what you're saying is that everybody is equal. There's no top of the table. Right. This is yes. part. We are all equal around this beautiful table. This counter space is about us being equal. In fact, continue to follow me all the way through. Past Clem, I'm going to continue, right? Someone's chopping over here. I'm continuing. And we're going to continue to flow and flow, and as we go and go, we flow. It's simple. Look at that. It is. Hey. And now I'm back here. Am I at the head of the table, at the bottom of the table? There's no head, there's no bottom. We are all equal on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Look how I walk back. Look at that. Look. I'm walking back. Yo, left, right, it's left, gorgeous. right. Left foot, right that. foot. Fantastic. What? Look at it. No. Beautiful. So, true story, I actually went to the team that built this amazing kitchen, and I told them, and I, I, I said it, this is the best kitchen we have Ever, Agreed. ever had. So, um, yeah, um, I'm moving in. I'll be here 24-7. Yeah. This is a really good. And no. another thing is that we did put a bit of a measurement thing about the counter height, and they listened. Otherwise, I may have disappeared. But they did it perfectly, so you can still see at least this section of me. I'm happy. I really am. That is looking gorgeous. I'm going to let you continue. Thank you. By the way, you've been a treat today. Thank you. You are huh? wonderful. Okay, I'm out now. He's Bye out. Now. He's out. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl Wasty. Okay, back to the cooking. We're getting some nice colour on our veggies. And again, we don't want to overcook it because we're loving the green and the and crunch. And you need the crunch. The, there we go. The most important is the crunch. There we go. Now I'm going to start assembling. Can please I start do, assembling? Please do. Pearl couscous already been cooked, salt and pepper. And you want to season every element that you add Correct. to the couscous. You want to add, make sure you're not missing, lacking seasoning. So, chickpeas for a little bit of 
Flavor I dip. say meatiness as well, right? You get that, like, there we go. With that umami flavor. There we go. Chickpeas. And we're going, going to... with the edamames. Cucumber. And again, this is everything you can blanch and chop way ahead of time. Everything can be done ahead of time. I'm going to go in with this delicious red onion here. Oh, yes, you told me to get it into the bowl and then hit it with? Lemon zest. Lemon zest, lemon Radish. zest. Radish. There we go. Beautiful chopped parsley. Bit of salt and pepper. And again, the reason you want to season these while they're still warm, any ingredient, any vegetable, any fruit, anything, just seems to absorb seasoning so much better when it's still hot. So make sure you get your seasoning on there when it's still hot. Just lemon zest. Just lemon zest. Because why? If you do it, if it's when it's hot, it absorbs that flavor so much faster, mm -hmm. and then they just become oh, this beautiful citrus flavor. Got it. Got it. Thank goodness for guys. Functional kitchen. We actually have drawers and cupboards we can use. It's like like your mom's house, man. Wow, I love it. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, Clem, can I put you to work? Please. Can you cut these for me? So How? rough cuts about this thick. Okay, and that's everything. That's everything. Got you, got Shove you, it got all you. Together. We want we don't want it too thin to lose their to lose their texture. The texture and integrity. There we go. Hundred percent. There we right, go. I'm, I'm coming straight in with the board. We're gonna go straight from the board. Straight from the board. I'm gonna start on our dressing. We got some honey over here. I'm gonna ask Nicole to bring us a beautiful platter so we can plate up this beautiful couscous salad. Lemon juice. And can I have my olive oil back? Please? Olive oil back, yes. There we go. Thank you. Full of, I like, I like the, the avo that's gone in there. That's gonna make it nice and creamy. Love it. The colors. We're gonna come back to show you the final product because I wanna plate this up beautifully so you can see it. Courtney's nearly done with that beautiful dressing, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Culinary Hotline Bling! Bling, bling, bling! It's my feel good breakfast show. Good morning and welcome back to the kitchen. It's part three of the culinary hotline bling! <laughs> now, amazing Chef Quartz has made two dishes already and this was our beautiful pull couscous salad. We're going on to something sweet now. And again, don't forget to send those voice notes through if you have any. And that WhatsApp number is 063 I've been practicing during the ad break. Here we go. So we're doing pavlova. Pavlova, best dessert in, in town. You know, and I love it because First stopper. a lot of the stuff you make before the time, again, yep. we're talking about entertaining and this is how you do it. Best time. Talk to me about what's happening. Inside your mixer, you've got... Uh, egg whites, cast of sugar, so it's one to two ratio. Uh -huh. I don't put any um, corn flour or anything to bind it because I love it when it's... Crunchy, crunchy on the outside. Cracks are good, as you can see. Yeah. And then it goes like a soft cloud inside. So when you crack it, it's like melting your mouth. Deliciousness. And if you want this recipe, go and check it out on expressoshow.com. This is one you're going to really want for the festive season. Courtney, take it away. So we're going to just finish this um, meringue, meringue mixture. Yeah. And then my trick is take it all out. I always love to shove it straight, all the mixture, straight into the center. And I mean, I also like when you do a rough kind of shape and not have it too perfect. No, because then when it comes out, it's not going to be perfect anyway. Exactly, so, so be creative with it. What I like to do is I like to go up the sides, moving your, your tray. I've never seen this technique, I am focused. So you get like a beautiful little bollocky and then I flatten it slightly, very rough. And it nice. goes into the oven, and 120 for three hours. It comes out looking like this. So I know that I need to get cracking with some cream. I've already started whipping the cream. Add vanilla. Vanilla, which is the most important. Because I mean, it is the most important thing because otherwise you just have sweet cream, not a bad thing, no. but it becomes a shin. Yeah. You need to, like, really pump it up. Agree, that's what the vanilla does. So I know you're going to be doing a lot of whisking. That's my job at home, to make to whip all the cream over the festive piece. season. Yeah, so here's the trick. When you first start holding your whisk, hold it like this, so you're kind of holding it downwards, and then you're going to... Once your arm starts getting tired after doing this, you swap it around, and then you hold it 
like that, and you use a different you use a different muscle in your arm, so you're able to go for double oh, the time, longer. much longer. And another tip: make sure that your cream is ice cold when you whip it, and your bowl. Yeah. December's really hot, and oh. you see people whipping cream and nothing's happening. It's because the cream isn't cold, the bowl isn't cold. No, okay, cool. And then it's gonna fall off the side. You don't want that. No, you don't. What I love about pavlova is, is that you can always add whatever fruit. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, berries. It, you can add mango. I, I would avoid watermelon because it's so liquidy. But you can add mango, peaches, nectarines, you can even char the nectarines. My secret is always adding passion fruit curd into the mm. cream first. Yeah, that tang is absolutely amazing. And then you just smush it in, so you get it all over. Mm, and and again, here comes the fun part. Viewers at home, you're gonna want this recipe. Go and check it out on expressionshow.com. It's looking beautiful, it's looking festive. Festive! Oh man. I love starting with the strawberries. I keep the green on. Yes. Because it just adds another element of color. There we go. So strawberries in, blueberries on the top. Perfect. We're let, gonna, them, let them fall down. We got that looking beautiful, finishing off our beautiful salad with some almonds. Courts, you've been absolutely amazing. You've been amazing. We're going to be back next week with more thrilling culinary activities on the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ching, ching, ching.